Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be finishing up our review of season one. So let's go ahead and get into part two. Episode four, The Ruthless Pursuit of Blood with All a Child's Demanding, introduces us to Claudia, who emerges from her transformation wide-eyed and curious. Louis brought her home charred and near death, begging Lestat to change her, which he does, albeit begrudgingly. What she thought were angels, she now understands to be demons, and she confronts that understanding with a fearless, childlike wonder. This introduction of 14-year-old Claudia brings a sort of whimsy to the series now. Rashid, Louis' assistant, brings Daniel Claudia's journals, and this young lady journals everything. Every feeling, every argument, every kill, all of it. But Daniel knows he isn't getting the full picture, as some of the pages from Claudia's journals have been torn out. But nonetheless, the picture still paints. Louis immediately takes to being a father, while Lestat doesn't care for her too much. That changes, however, when he sees that her thirst for blood is similar to his. When they take her hunting for the first time, she kills a constable. Another kill for the culture. But obviously, they have to advise against that. The two of them realize pretty quickly that she's actually more vicious than either one of them as she's stuck in this perpetual puberty and it was probably a bad idea to turn a child. Louis and Claudia build a bond outside of Lestat as they can communicate telepathically, blocking Lestat out, which he definitely hates, but it gives them an opportunity to discuss what secrets they think he might be hiding from them about the vampire world. They both have a curiosity for it, but Claudia's is much stronger as she's actually willing to chase after it. Even with all of the tension, the three of them manage to cultivate a happy home in the beginning. Lestat connects with Claudia when it comes to hunting humans. He can engage with her about it in a way that he can't really engage Louis. She doesn't have the same moral hangups that he has. She's a hungry child and that baby finna eat. Lestat takes Claudia to a makeout point at a park. She is to attack the couple in their car, but she becomes caught up in their lovemaking, which is the start of a sexual awakening in Claudia, who is is now 18, and as she's 18, she wants to be seen as an adult. Claudia starts going out independently, and this is when she meets Charlie, her very first love. She journals about him, and she longs to be touched by him. On one of their dates, she attempts to recreate that scene that she saw between those lovers in the back of their car, caught up in the throes of passion, and being a raging, hormonal, teenage vampire. Unfortunately, Claudia sucks his neck a little too literally, and she killed a young man. R.I.P. Charlie. Goodbye, Charlie. I love you. Devastated by what she's done, she runs to her demon daddies and begs Lestat to change him. But Charlie's already dead. Now, I'm not a Lestat fan, but Louis tries to blame Lestat for this in some kind of way, which I, I don't see how this is his fault. That little girl drained that man. Like, what Lestat supposed to do about that? He did. Sure, he could have been kinder, but when have you ever seen Lestat be kind? You weren't attracted to this man's gentle nature. You wanted that savage in him. Okay? You love that demon D. Please. Miss me with that. Anyway, Claudia is completely traumatized and Lestat rubs it in her face. But I'm team Lestat on that one. Like, little girl, we're vampires. You can't be out here loving these hoes. At the end of this episode, we see Claudia suffer a mental break as she attempts to self-harm herself in the way that a teenager would. Episode five, A Vile Hunger for Your Hammering Heart, introduces us to a less whimsical side of our darling Claudia. Claudia's first kill, the constable, called her a devil 
in his last words. And Charlie, her first love, called her an angel in his. I think this sparked a sort of kink in her, where now she keeps track of her victim's final words, which Daniel discovers while reading her journal. Claudia embarks on an insane killing spree, burying the bodies in Chalmay, I think it was called Chalmay, yeah, in Chalmay, which is three feet below the river line. So soon as a storm comes in, it washes all the bodies. This obviously haunts the town and not only the town, but Louis and Lestat when they're told that soft parts of every single body that was found had a piece of it chopped off, including a titty. The girl took one single solitary titty. When confronted, she blames them and their love and the fact that she has no one. She's trapped in the body of a 14 year old, so who will have her? During her killing spree, she attempted to turn some boys, but obviously was unsuccessful. She begs Lestat to turn someone for her. He obviously turns that down, and she calls Lestat selfish for the fact that he won't turn someone for her, yet he has two lovers. So she exposes the fact that Lestat is still sneaking around with Antoinette, but Louis don't care too. Louis don't give a damn. You gonna let Lestat Lestat, okay? Claudia runs away in this episode, casting Louis into a seven year stint of depression, taking Lestat right on along with him. Louis longs for Claudia and is totally disconnected from Lestat, only thinking of his daughter. On her journey, Claudia ends up running into another vampire. She's excited at first, but unfortunately he ends up assaulting her. She journals about it, but those pages have been torn out. This is something that Louis struggles to relive as it was his voice calling out to her that attracted that other vampire to her. So now Actually, he blames himself. After witnessing a heart-wrenching moment between Louis and his sister Grace, where she tells him that her and her family are moving away and that Louis must be dead to her, while revealing that she put his name on a headstone, Claudia returns home with a renewed purpose of not being Louis's daughter, but being Louis's sister. But my good sis refuses to be under the thumb of Lestat. She demands that Louis leave with her to Europe so that they can find other vampires. So this enrages Lestat. He is resentful from being stuck in this depression cave with Louis for the past seven years, which is rich considering this was his reaction when Louis asked him if he was enough. Aren't I enough? <laughs> But the man is big mad that Louis could possibly abandon him for Claudia, so he attacks her. Louis jumps in to defend her, but this just sends Lestat over the edge. And he unleashes pure hell on Louis, beating him within an inch of his life. Ending the episode by revealing his ability to fly and dropping our near dead Louis from above the clouds. Episode six, like angels put in hell by God, takes us through the process of Louis's healing, which takes several months. Claudia helps to rehabilitate Louis and also acts as his protector when Lestat tries to win him back. Three years after the incident, Lestat pops up bearing lots and lots of gifts, one being a car. Louis struggles to turn Lestat away, but Claudia has absolutely no problem shooting him down, speaking for the both of them every single time. But eventually, Lestat wins Louis back by composing a song that, get this, he puts his side bitches vocals on. This, for some reason, okay, drives Louis to go and fuck him. Toxic. But the deed is done and they're back together now. And all Louis and Claudia can do are lay some ground rules in order for Lestat to return home. One of them being that they are all equals and they're no longer allowed to look at Claudia as a daughter. She is now a sister. Two, they want him to kill Antoinette. I don't know why she got to die. She just a side bitch. Well, well, we do be killing side, you know. Scratch that. I didn't say that. And three, they want answers about his maker. Lestat recounts how he was turned, which was pretty gruesome. He was 
kept as a snack, basically, surrounded by corpses that resembled him, because apparently his captor had a type, until one day he just decided to turn him in, according to Lestat, promptly unalive himself. Louis does what he can to bring the family back together, but Claudia isn't as forgiving. And not only are Claudia and Lestat having a hard time reconnecting, but the entire town has turned against them. This odd trio of non-relatives that don't age. In this episode, Lestat pretends to kill Antoinette, but Louis and Claudia catch him with her. Uh, Louis doesn't really seem to care. He seems more defeated, if anything. Claudia gives Louis an ultimatum about running away to Europe with her, as there's a train leaving that night. But Louis instead just gives her his blessing, telling her that she doesn't need him. And she don't. She really don't, but the baby girl don't want to be alone. She makes the decision that she is going to hop on that train tonight. And this causes Louis to contemplate unaliving himself. While hiding out on the train, Claudia is confronted by crazy ass Lestat who done massacred everybody on that train. He absolutely refuses to let Louis sink back into that same depression with the absence of Claudia and demands that she come back home and make him happy. At this point, they realize that they are indeed Lestat's captives, and the only way out is to kill him. Claudia is finally figuring Lestat out, and she's starting to outsmart him, which gives her a confidence that she will be able to kill him. At the end of this episode, we see Daniel shook from a dream after he recalls how he met Louis at a bar, and he realizes that Rashid was there. The assistant, he's supposed to be a human. He shouldn't have been there. That's not right, but he was. Episode seven, The Thing Lay Still, is a story of patricide. Lestad has spiraled into a controlling psychopath, basically holding all of them hostage. And with everything going on in their town, Lestat is growing increasingly paranoid and wants to leave. Claudia, steadfast in her mission to kill Lestat, attempts to reconnect with him by playing piano with him and suggests that they throw a little going away party, but in a way that makes him feel like it's his idea. Lestat seems convinced that Louis and Claudia are in full Stockholm Syndrome mode and doesn't question their sudden collaborative behavior. They go to Anderson about a big party that they want to throw for Mardi Gras and tell him that Lestat wants to be named king of Mardi Gras, which Anderson scoffs at. Him. <laughs> and Lestat don't like that. Can't be can't be scoffing at Lestat. But the bribe of a new boat helps change Anderson's tune. Before they leave, Anderson asks them where they met the devil and what the terms of their agreement are. Why, you gonna go there? Throughout this episode, we follow Claudia along on her plot to kill Lestat. She plans to poison a set of twins for Lestat to drink at the party. But at this party, things seem to go a bit astray. Louis can hear the thoughts of another vampire and he doesn't seem on board with the plan to kill Lestat anymore. In fact, he seems to be falling even more in love with Lestat while Lestat can sense that something is off and seems to be looking to see if Louis does in fact still love him. On the dance floor, Lestat and Louis lose themselves, forgetting about all the other party goers in the room and they share a kiss on the dance floor. This is illegal at this time, by the way. They trying to go to jail, nah. But maybe it was different for rich people. Maybe they could get away with shit. Hmm, probably. The trio bring a small group of party growers back to their home where they promise to reveal their secret of use. Instead, they get ate up. Lestat going straight for Anderson first. They chase down and kill everyone at the party except for one of the twins, which they saved special for Lestat. But he can smell the poison in his blood, which Antoinette confirms because surprise. Antoinette's a vampire now. That voice that Louis was hearing at the party, 
Antoinette. And she been spying for Lestette this whole time. Antoinette attacks Claudia, forcing her to drink the twin, thinking this will kill her, but it doesn't. Claudia was already two steps ahead of them. She knew that Antoinette had been spying on her and she was intentionally feeding Louis the wrong information. She'd actually spiked Anderson and she knew that Lestat was gonna go for him first cause Lestat Petty and Anderson insulted him. Claudia stakes Antoinette and as Lestat lie dying, Louis slits his throat. Claudia, being my favorite little psychopath, grabs her journal, sits next to Lestat's dying body, dips her pen in his blood and journals his last words. In his own blood. <laughs> if that's not poetry, this part of the story confuses Daniel as he wonders why they didn't burn his body. Instead, Louis tells him that they wrapped him up in a rug, threw him in a trunk, and left him on the side of the road for the garbage people to pick up. Daniel thinks all of this sounds ridiculous and accuses Louis of being dishonest once again. It doesn't make any sense that they didn't burn his body. We know that Claudia definitely wanted to burn his body. He insinuates that Louis knew perfectly well what was gonna happen once he got down to that dump. He knew that he was gonna be able to feed himself on rats and bring himself back. He brings up the fact that he's cut more pages out of Claudia's journals and really beats down on the fact that Louis constantly chooses Lestat over Claudia and that Claudia must have hated him. This turns Louis into what, like a pitiful little self-hating child because he knows it's true. But in the end, Rashid removes his contacts and starts to fly, revealing that he is a 514 year old vampire named R. Armand. And if you know anything about Interview with a Vampire lore, you know that Armand is an ancient vampire who is the leader of a vampire coven. And that wraps up part two of our review for season one of Interview with a Vampire. The way Armand raised up on Daniel for talking to his lover like that. If you're not flying up out your seat to protect me, what are we doing? Are we really in love? And I bet Armand is fine without them contacts and fucking ugly ass contacts. I hate these contacts that they all wear. Why did they have to do that? Like I get it. Our society is obsessed with non-brown eyes, but there's a reason you look better with brown eyes. I, there's so many songs written about how beautiful brown eyes are. Pretty brown eyes. Oh, they make the vampire so beautiful in those contacts. They look stupid, okay? Stop telling that lie. Ain't nothing cute about them contacts. Uh, give me Blackthorn flashbacks. Who's speaking up? Did y'all hear that rumor? That there might be a season two of Shogun? But anyway, season one was perfection. I love the way they recreated Storyville in New Orleans, which is a neighborhood that doesn't exist anymore. I love how they allowed the racial dynamics to be as ugly as they realistically would be. Claudia is definitely my favorite character. And did y'all know Claudia was like five or six in the books? Did she experience all this sexual repression in these books? See, you know what? Don't even answer that question. It won't, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not gonna say what I wanna say because it's problematic, but that's why I can't read books written by everybody, okay? Six or seven? Why they turn her? Is it similar? Like, was she orphaned by something they did? Like, was it their fault? Should I Google it? I should have Googled this, huh? Could've did a little research. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. I love Louis, but Louis a punk. And when he be acting like a punk, mm-mm. Mm-mm, not for that blonde hair, blue-eyed vampire, absolutely not. <laughs> I will not stand for it. I've already watched episode one of season two and I cannot wait to come back and recap that for you guys. It's so good. There's a new actress playing Claudia now and it just looks really good. I'm super excited for it. 
What did you guys think about season one? Who are your favorite characters? What are you looking forward to when it comes to season two? If you read any of the other books in the interview with the vampire series, what characters are you expecting to pop up in season two? As always, talk to me down in those comments. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Don't you feel that gun, 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 gun.